Hey, it's Billy Morrison, and you're watching Roland and Boss TV. Why am I in London? I was asking myself that same question this morning when it was about minus 10 degrees, <laughs> and I've come from the land of palm trees and sunshine. I came to London, A, because I've got a bunch of good friends here, and B, one of my... One of my guitar influences is a guy called Matthew Ashman. Was a guy called Matthew Ashman. He died 15 years ago. Um, and he was a guitar player in the original Adam and the Ants. And he was one of the uh, founder members of Bow Wow Wow. Uh -huh. And he was in a band called Chiefs of Relief. And I, <laughs> I was on tour with Billy Idol this year. And I had a crazy idea when I was listening to the Chiefs of Relief album that it would be nice to just simply remember Matthew. He's a guy, he's a guy that not many people know, um, and yet everyone knows the music. And I made literally a, just a couple of phone calls and everything snowballed, and now we have a sold out London show, uh, which sold out in nine days, and it is simply a tribute to Matthew Ashman. It's not one band, uh, we're gonna just celebrate the music. Fantastic. And what was it about Matthew that influenced you as a kid growing up? Um, Matthew Ashman. Matthew Ashman had uh, a coolness about him in all aspects, on all levels. First of all, he had a fantastic Mohican. When you saw Matthew, he was dressed head to toe in Vivian Westwood, and he had this Mohican. And uh, you know, he just he exuded guitar hero and then when you started to try and learn some of the songs like you know I, I was a, a teenager and I'm playing guitar you realize just how complex and complicated and innovative his guitar work was um, I think that he was you know along with Steve Jones and uh, Mick Jones he was he was one of the true original punk guitarists um, my history with Boss and Roland go back to when I was about 12 years old. Just like most guitarists, actually, I've got to say that Boss stand out as being, they're the company that when you're a kid and you want to delay, or you first figure out that you've got to tune a guitar, you want a Boss pedal. You don't go, I want something, you just, that's what people, the kids know the Boss pedals and they go, I need a tuner, and they buy a Boss pedal. So my very first pedal was probably, um, it was one of the original OD1s okay. because I didn't know how to distort the guitar. When I turned the amp up, my dad would scream at me. <laughs> and this seemed to be the simplest solution. Followed shortly after because I didn't care about being in tune to start with. It was right. punk. Then I realized that being in tune helps you as a guitar player. So I bought one of the, um, the, the original tuner pedals. But I have used Boss pedals for... Well, for, as long as I've been playing guitar, I've used Boss pedals. Sure. And what are you using at the moment? Well, I've got a bunch of... I'm lucky enough to have a bunch of different um, Boss setups. I've got an acoustic pedal board, which... Because when, when we play with Billy Idol, he does a lot of acoustic stuff. Sure. And so I have a pedal board that's... It's made to help and facilitate acoustic work. So that has, um, that has a delay pedal, tremolo pedal. I'm a big fan of the tremolo pedal. Uh, the super chorus, um, a giga delay as well as the normal delay, um, and a tuner. And then in my electric rack, because I have a, a, a rack system that we use a switching system, uh, a, a pedal switching pedal thing. Sure. And uh, I use, uh, again, the trem. I use the acoustic simulator because I find that, uh, you know, rather than if we're doing Sweet 16 or something, I'll put a, a, a big acoustic guitar on and we'll play it on acoustic but there's also sections of songs where I can just patch it in and hit acoustic for the verse and the acoustic simulator pedal is absolutely fantastic for that sure um, delays use their delays um, yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan I, I think they're very simple and easy to use and sound great I'm also excited for this London gig. I've just got my hands, thanks to you, <laughs> on uh, one of the Space Echoes, the new Space Echoes, and uh, that really is going to go take me back to the late 70s, early 80s, and the, the type of... Uh, I think I had an original Space Echo. I can't remember. Sure. I was out of my head most of the time. <laughs> Camp Freddy has enabled me to share the stage with some amazing musicians, more than I've got time to name. Um, there's a lot of standout ones, Ronnie Wood, 
um, Slash Every Time, Ozzy, Robbie Williams, I loved, you know, we, we did a few songs together and, and he's a wonderful kid and, and I love him. And uh, I think I would have to say if I got a chance to go and do one guest again, yeah. it would be Lou Reed. There was something about playing New York with Lou Reed and doing a Velvet Underground song. Me and Navarro, my partner in crime in that band, were just beaming, yeah, staring right. at each other going, we're playing Venus in Furs with Lou Reed in New York. I'm still getting that thinking about I it. I can't even amazing. imagine. It's amazing. It's and amazing. and what, what do you think, I mean, you know, looking back, just to hear you say that, looking back at a record like Transformer, how did that affect you? I mean, was it was it just saying, oh. um, was it just saying, okay, th this is a benchmark? Um, the Transformer album affected me more than you could ever know. You've mentioned that album. I, you know, my past is not a secret, and I have been known to take a drug or two. Sure. Um, don't do this at home, kids. But if you happen to be, put Transformer on. It was just insane. I would get loaded and listen to Transformer on repeat, that and Ziggy Stardust mm. were just playing the whole time. Mm. And the reason that album is so seminal is, is that he did not give a fuck when he made it. He made the album he wanted to make, made the statements about, I mean, you know, talking about drugs and transvestites and, and the New York art scene, that's not a commercial record. Mm. But the reason it was such a success, it was because it was such an honest record uh, which you can't go wrong. If you make music honestly, you cannot go wrong. Whether it sells one copy or a million copies, it's honest. And as long as music is honest, I think, you know, it'll continue to be made. Sure. I do think the music business has changed. I don't think it's dead. I think that's uh, just a negative attitude. Um, you know, everything changes. The movie industry changes. You, what it, it, it depends how much music moves you. Music moved me and changed my life to such an extent that I basically do whatever it takes to play music. If you've got that drive, you will figure it out. The, the reality is, kids are lucky these days. You don't have to impress some guy that's 60 years old in a suit in order to get a big check. You just don't have to do it. That is, that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. You can go and make your own music and make your own website and sell your own music and you know, borrow your dad's car and go and play anywhere. It just depends how much you want it. The days of free expense accounts are gone, thank God, because the guys that had the free expense accounts didn't understand music, and they signed shit. So now maybe with this change in the music business, we have a chance of hearing some honest, original, um, from the heart music, because you don't have to worry about whether it's gonna be a hit. There's no such thing as a hit anymore, yeah. unless you're a, a pop singer doesn't matter about hits it matters about you know do you have something to say sure and that's been the same right the way back since the blues if you've got something to say just say it and don't worry about the end result that I mean that really is the way to do this I love a rock star sure. I don't want to see a bunch of kids in sneakers staring at the floor moaning about how bad life is I want to see Freddie Mercury I want to see Johnny Rotten I want to see Robbie Williams you know Rock stars. Yeah. I'm involved with writing the new Billy Idol album with Steve Stevens and Billy. Uh, we've written a few songs together and they're amazing and I love it and uh, I'm being invited to write more which is, which is an honour for me to write with Billy and Steve. Uh, Camp Freddy, we have our 10 year anniversary, I think it's next year, we've been going 10 years which is not bad for a covers band. Um, so we continue to just do whatever comes our way, it's a fun project. Um, I may do another Circus Diablo album. That's just a, it's a, it's not about selling units. It's just about making a good record. I was very proud of the first album. We did the Ozfest, a lot of fun. Might do another album. I know I've got some acting coming up. I know that I will be on Californication on your screens coming to you next year. Right. I've already shot that, and uh, there's some more acting coming down the pipeline. Um, I might actually write a movie. I don't know. Wicked. We'll see what happens. Wow, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time. And uh, great luck with the gig for Matthew. Viva la Roland Boss. <laughs>